matter who you are, you're going to have a fight on your hands. You know why? Because I love her and I love them. And if you mess with them, you're going to make me angry. And that anger is not to hurt you. That anger is energy to protect them. You understand what I'm saying? And so anger is energy that is to be used to solve problems. Now, what are some things that, that biblically, um, are, what are some things we get angry at? What are some things that people in New Zealand get angry at? Australians. Australians? Is that what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You get angry about Australians? What else? <laughs> what was that? Okay, so other people's behavior, what they're doing or not doing, right? Okay. What else do we get angry about? Breakfast. What? Breakfast? Breakfast. Rugby. Rugby. Okay. Fine. You get angry about rugby. Okay, what else? What do we what do we have a tendency to be angry about? Injustice. Okay, injustice. Very good. Okay, that's more of where I'm heading here. How about we get angry at being inconvenienced? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What, what, what were you going to say? What were you going to say? Oh, inconvenience. Oh, inconvenience? Okay. Okay, what else? Anybody else? Yeah. We get angry. How many of us ever get angry over foolish things? Okay. Um, in America, the, I don't know if they do that here or not, but they want you, if you're a man, they want you to put the toilet seat back down. Um, and women get really upset if they go in to use the toilet and their bottom hits porcelain instead of the seat. Okay? Okay. They get really upset and really angry over those things. They get angry over traffic. They get angry over um, a perceived um, what somebody else said about them or didn't say about them, that somebody cut in line. There's all types of things that people get angry over. But what is, biblically speaking, what are some things that we are justifiably angry over? Sin, right? Okay? In other words, we can get so upset over things, but we don't get upset and angry over the right things. Okay? So it's okay to be angry, but we need to make sure that we're angry over the right things. Okay, here's some things that, that I would say that we ought to be angry about. We ought to be angry when Satan gets a hold of one of our kids or one of our fellow church members and takes them down. We ought to be angry over abortion. We ought to be angry over things that go against God's word. And we ought to be angry over those types of things. And we ought to use them as energy to what? Solve. To solve problems. Okay? So Paul says, be angry and sin not, but notice what he says next. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. What is that saying there? In other words, you're going to have problems. Don't let the sun go down without solving them. Now, I want you to turn with me to, to Matthew chapter 6, okay? Matthew chapter number 6. This is very, very important. This is probably one of the, the biggest things that you are going to get out of this lesson today. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 34. Okay, I want to give everybody time to get there. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 34. Okay, it says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, so for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In other words, this is what this means. Okay? You need to take care of today's problems today. Here's why. Because tomorrow is going to
going to have a whole new set of problems. Okay. Is that true? Doesn't the Bible say that our, our life is going to be filled with tribulation and in this life we will have trouble? Okay, if you don't catch anything else in this, catch this, okay? Solve today's problems today because tomorrow is going to have a whole new set. Here's the problem that comes in when we don't stay current, when we don't deal with today's problems today. What happens? You don't deal with today's problems today, so you go to bed, you let the sun go down upon your wrath, and you wake up tomorrow, and you have a whole new set of problems going on, but what do you still have? You still have the old one, right? And so those new problems come in, and they get stacked on the old ones. And then you go through another day, and the next day comes along. And that day's problems come in. And the next thing you know, your problems are compounding, and you're stressed, and you're angry, and you're short with your wife or with your husband, and you don't have the patience with your kids. And the next thing you know, all of these pressures are coming on to you, and before you know it, that's why people explode. If you ever talk to somebody, you're like, man, you know, all I did was ask them a question, and they just went off on me. Well, that's why that happens. Because they've got all of these things that are on them, and they're building, and they're building, and they're building, and then the next thing you know, boom, like this volcanic explosion, you know, they've gone off. And so very, very important that we're honest and that we keep current. Now, there's six questions here that when you're going to deal with a problem, okay, if we're, not, if we're going to deal with today's problems today, six questions. And these are things that I would encourage you to, to, to write down that I would even seek to, to bring them to, to, to memorization or at least have them in your, your arsenal of, of fighting sin. The first one is, do I have the facts right? How many of you have ever stuck your foot in your mouth over something that you thought was something, but it wasn't something? Okay? What does the Bible say? The Bible says that a fool answereth the matter before he heareth it. Okay? So before you jump to conclusions about somebody, before you get really upset and angry over, did you know that so-and-so said this? God, I can't believe you did that. Make sure you have the facts right. Because guess what? Sometimes what we think and what we perceive is not necessarily the truth. So make sure you have the facts right. Two, should love hide it or cover it? Is it sinful? Is it hindering growth? And we'll talk about this in resolving conflict, but when we have a conflict with somebody, we have two choices, okay? Two choices. We can either go to them and talk to them about it, or we can, what we would call, let love cover it. In other words, I don't think that they meant that. I'm not, I'm going to believe the best about that person, that they did not intend uh, to say that, or for them to mean, or to come across that way. So I'm going to let love cover it. So those are your two choices. Three, is my timing right? Okay? Sometimes people have horrible, horrible timing. Okay? Um, I remember when, um, when I was uh, 23, my mom passed away. She died of cancer when she was 57 years old. And I remember that um, of somebody coming to me about something, um, you know, right at that time, and it was just really, really petty. It just wasn't the right time to come and, and talk to me about something that I had done 15 years earlier. I'm like, can you pick a better time? Okay. So make sure that your timing is right. Four, is my attitude right? Okay? Okay, time out. Okay, parents, this is really, really important. Is my attitude right? Okay, the Bible says that we are to discipline our children, right? Okay? We never want to do that when we're angry. Okay? We never, ever want to do that when we're angry. We want to make sure that we were, and I think your pastor talked about a couple weeks ago about the fruits of the Spirit. We want to make sure that we're self-controlled when those things come because sometimes we can discipline our children out of what? Anger. 
rather than what? Man, I want my kid to learn so that they can be like Jesus. Okay? And so make sure that our attitude is right towards people. In other words, we want them to, uh, we want that relationship to be restored. We want that person to learn and to grow and be edified. Um, five, are my words loving? Okay? Think about what you say before you're going to say it, Ephesians 4, 15. And then number six, and probably the most important, that I pray and ask for God's help. Okay? We are always dependent upon God for everything. Okay? And I pray and ask God for his help. Okay? So rule number one is what? Be honest. Rule number two is what? Keep coming. Okay, let's go to rule number three. Rule number three. Attack the problem, not the person. Okay. Now, can I fill you guys in on something here? Okay. People are not your enemy. Okay? Ephesians 6 says this. It says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Okay? Our, our, our fight and our battle is not with each other. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, those who are struggling in their marriage and so frustrated, maybe even coming in this weekend with your spouse, your spouse is not your enemy. Those of us who have children and we're frustrated with our children and we can't wait until they grow up and move out of the house, okay? They are not your enemy, okay? They are not come on earth here to, to frustrate you to death, okay? Our real enemy is Satan, okay? Our real enemy is the destruction of this world. So it's the attack the problem, not the person. Let's look at Ephesians 4 again. And let's look at verses 29 and 30. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now, underline these next words. But that which is good. So not corrupt communication. We're putting off corrupt communication. We're putting on that which is good to the use of what? Edifying. Or that word edifying means to build up. That it may minister grace to the hearer or to the one that you are talking to. Now, what does it mean to attack the problem, not the person? In other words, we're going to deal with persons. We're not going to attack a person's character, okay? Now, how many of you, okay, this is going to be good, okay. How many of you have been driving down the road and somebody, we were driving yesterday and in America, we drive on the right side of the road. Over here, you drive on the left side of the road. So I didn't even notice it. But Irma was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. And this lady, this lady is driving down the wrong side of the road. And she, there's this car coming. And then I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> this is looking really good. Okay. So anyways, they're coming in. The guy that's going by, he's like, Has anybody ever, okay, we won't say anything verbally, but in your mind, you had a name for a driver that you can't remember. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Well, no. Okay, so we want to, <laughs> we don't want to be attacking a person's character. Name calling, and I don't want to start using stuff that we use in America because I've learned that some stuff over here is not the same as it is over there. Um, but uh, I think I heard somebody call somebody an idiot. Is that okay? Okay. okay. Um, but name calling over there it's you know stupid, dummy, ignorant, or a few other choice things that people can, can call them. Um, but when we call people's names or we attack a person's character, are we following verse 29 and 30 here? Because it says that we're not to let any corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth, but the stuff that comes out of our mouth is to be used to what? Edify, right? And build up. Okay? Husbands, let me ask you this question. 
how good are you, how good are you, and how intentional are you in building up the wife that God has given to you? Do you come alongside her and tell her that she's beautiful? Do you come alongside her and tell her, you know what, I am so thankful for all that you do to help me and to help me that you are to me. I'm so thankful for what you do with the kids and the way that you contribute to the house and those types of things. Wives, are you edifying your husbands? Are you building them up? And thank you so much for for working so hard. I really wish you wouldn't leave your clothes laid in the floor, but I love you anyway. You know what I'm saying? In other words, if there's a problem, we deal with the problem, but we don't attack the person themselves. Okay? We deal with the problem. But a lot of times what people do is they get angry at the person, and therefore they go after them, they go after their character. By the way, you know why that happens? Because we like to have the upper hand. We, we like to win, don't we? And if we can make them feel small, and us feel big, and them be wrong, and we be right, then we win, right? Okay? It's not about winning. It's about building one another up. It's about encouraging one another. It's about being honest. It's about keeping courage. It's about attacking the problem, not attacking the person. When we do that, according to verse 30, it grieves the Holy Spirit of God. There are two ways that we must speak the truth in chapter 4 and verse 15, and that is we're going to do that in love. We're supposed to speak the truth in love, and we use it to produce growth. Words that edify and give grace to those who hear. Okay. When you zero in on the problem instead of the person, then you are able to resolve that conflict. But let's think about this for just a second. How many of us have had an issue or a problem that we have gone to somebody else over, and because we were angry or because we were frustrated or because we attacked the person instead of the problem, made the situation worse? And that happened to me several times. Okay? So that's what the Bible is trying to teach us here. It says, look, don't let even though that might be in your heart, okay, get right with God before you do that. Don't let corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Use the words that you have to edify and to build up other people. Now, number four, let's look at verse 31 and 32. And this might be the one that we have the most difficulty with. Because that's um, act, don't react. Look at verse 31 and 32. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Now, I want you to notice, first of all, here, here are some reactions that can happen. These are things that we need to put off. Bitterness. Okay. Hang on here. Okay. Bitterness is a deadly poison. Okay. Bitterness destroys the person that is bitter. Okay. Now, we're going to get into this a little bit more tomorrow. But let me just help you out a little bit with bitterness, okay? People become bitter when they have been sinned against and when they have been hurt and the problem hasn't been dealt with, okay? And I've seen people that are bitter and angry at their parents from things that happened 25 or 30 years ago or in a relationship or a co-worker that went bad 10 or 15 years ago, 
and they're still angry, and they're still upset about it, and if you even mention a name or a situation or a time period, their blood starts boiling and their blood pressure goes up. Why? Because they're bitter. But guess what their bitterness is destroying? Is it destroying the person that's sinned against them? No. Who is it destroying? It's destroying them. And so he's saying this. He's saying, look, you need to put off bitterness. Bitterness is a refusal to treat someone as if they never hurt you. You're to put off wrath. These flaring outbursts of anger. You're to put off anger. That's that subtle indignation or hostility that, that desires revenge. Clamor, that is strife. Um, clamor is gossip. Clamor is this. See, I'm trying to think of whose names are there. Okay. Clamor is, you know what, Pastor Mike? Do you know what, um, Angela? I think that's her name, right? Angela, right? Okay. You know what Angela did? Can you believe that she said this? And, and you know what? She doesn't care. In other words, this can happen. Okay? You go around and you're so upset and you're so frustrated that you know what you do? You're trying to get other people on your side. What is the purpose of that? Not to edify or build up or solve problems. What is the purpose of that? To punish, right? Okay. And so clamor. Uh, I think the next one is, is slander, or evil speaking. Uh, that is speech that injures or abusive speech. And then malice. That is the desire to harm others or to see them suffer. And man, we should never desire to see people suffer. Why? Because our goal and desire is if a brother's overtaken in a fall, according to Galatians 6, we which are spiritual are supposed to what? Does anybody know? We still are. What is our ultimate desire? It's to, to renew fellowship, right? Okay? So, um, we're to put those things off, but I want you to notice what it says. It says all those things, put those off. In verse 32, and be ye, what's that next word? Kind. We would all do really, really well if we learned to practice kindness in our speech all the time. You know, when the, when the cash register lady, you know, messes up things, or the drive through person messes up your order, don't rip them to shreds. Be kind, okay? When your whoever's cooking burns dinner accidentally, don't rip them to shreds. Be kind. When your kids lock the keys in the car, be kind. Okay? Be kind one towards another. Then notice what it says, tenderhearted, compassionate, sympathetic towards one another. And then, here's a big one, forgiving one another. Okay? These are not your notes, but I want you to, to write these down. Okay? Forgiveness is huge. Okay. Let me teach you guys the difference between sorry and forgiveness. Okay? How many times have you told your kids, well, tell them you're sorry. Okay? Let me tell them, say you're sorry. Okay. Sorry is this. Sorry is I'm sad that it happened. Okay? Sorry means I'm sad that it happened. Forgiveness is something completely different. Forgiveness is this. I sinned when I. Okay? I was wrong when I. Will you forgive me? And here's what forgiveness looks like. Okay? Forgiveness is this. I will not, if I forgive somebody, I will not bring that up again to myself and dwell on that. How many have ever been hurt? Okay, and I'm speaking to you. I get this. Okay, because I've been hurt several times by people that I love. We've been hurt. 
And if we allow our mind to drift, we can start thinking about that hurt over and over again and we rehearse it over and over again in our mind. Okay? When we're doing that, guess what we have not done? We've not truly forgiven. Okay? So we don't rehearse it to ourselves. Two, we don't rehearse it to the person and bring it up against them that did it to me. Okay? So forgiveness is one of those things that ought to be going on on a regular basis in all of our homes. You know why? Because we're all sinful people. You married folks, you are sinners that said I do to somebody else. Okay? And what do sinners do? They sin. And what should sin be done in order to be confessed and ask forgiveness of, right? So if I am short with my wife, and I say something to her out of anger or whatever, do I just like, man, what should I do? I should go and say, you know what, Angel, I was wrong when I said what I said, and I was wrong in the way that I said it. Will you forgive me? And her response, yes, I forgive you. And so next week, whenever we have another, Okay? Okay? Because we're sinful people. If she's truly forgiven me, you know what she's not going to do? She's not going to bring up the effects that she forgave me for, right? Because that's been forgiven. Aren't you glad God does that for us too, by the way? Okay? And so, we're not going to bring it up to ourselves. We're not going to bring it up to the person that sinned against us. And we're not going to bring it up to other people. Listen, I am beyond thrilled. I was sitting back there while you guys were singing. By the way, I wish people in America sang to the Lord like you guys do. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to you guys sing, and literally tears are running down my face. I'm like, you know what? This is a dream come true. This is, this is everything that we worked for and planned for and prepared for. You guys have something extremely, extremely precious and it precious here. I mean, you really, really do. Can I encourage you and challenge you in something? Don't blow it. You know what can just destroy what you have right here? Sin. You know what the sin that most often destroys churches? And I've talked to some of you. Some of you have been in churches that this has happened. Okay? Universal sign. Okay. <laughs> and people begin to talk. I mean, do you know what Pastor Urban did? Or did you hear, did you see, man, did you see what he did? Or somebody else in the church, and then the next thing you know, people are talking, people are dividing and separating instead of edifying and building up. And when those things happen, Satan gets a good hold in the church, and the next thing you know, this beautiful thing that you have here is damaged. And people leave. And you know what happens when people leave? The body becomes disassembled. And it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to work. You know why? Because people aren't in their place doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so this whole idea of forgiveness is one of those things that if you will learn that and you will practice that and you will learn to be kind and you'll learn to communicate and you'll learn to use your anger in the right way to solve problems and if you'll keep current and if you will attack problems instead of people and if you'll act instead of react, this wonderful organization that you have right here, the church, the local church, the body of Christ, you know what it's going to continue to do? It's going to continue to grow, it's going to continue to flourish, and you're going to continue to be strong. And 15, 20, 25, 30 years, way past the time that this guy is gone, you're still going to have a strong body. Why? Because you do things God's way. And you don't allow sin and corruption to come in. You're not acting like the Gentiles. Okay? Now, let's, let's end and we're going to play some games and I'm going to go down a water slot, okay? <laughs> Changing habits.
Bible is not easy. 